All right, Shalom. I want to start off with giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yavashai, Bashim Harukakadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to you, brothers, to the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and also laboring in this word in true love and sincerity, and may blessings fall upon the houses of the one third. This is the book of Psalms 147, verse 19. He show up his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the Lord is dealing with the Israelites. Okay. As you see in the 19th verse, he show up his word unto Jacob. Now we know Jacob's name was later changed to Israel. Okay. Jacob is our forefather, which is the progenitor of the Israelites. Okay, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans? And also, you brothers and sisters scattered through the four corners of the earth whose seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, you come from the, res the respectively 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, so the word, the Holy Bible, was shown unto us. All right, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, us, right? He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the Lord is not dealing with these other nations. Okay. The Lord is only dealing with his people. His chosen people at that. Uh, uh, people uh, of his inheritance. A peculiar people. A people that is near to him. And a people that is, you know, uh, that he has set apart from himself. That's who he is dealing with. Okay. The Israelites. Let's get a precept. The book of Amos 3 verse 1, it says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which are brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, Jake, you want to know why you're going through everything that you're going through today? It's because of our disobedience unto the Lord. Okay? We didn't listen to his word that he has given unto us. So, for that purpose... Right, we uh, have the curses upon us until this day. Matter of fact, let's get another precept to back up what I'm saying because the AA, as the scripture says, prove all things. All right, so uh, let's go to the book of Baruch. Uh, uh, I'll start at 17. It says, Baruch 1, verse 17. For we have sinned before the Lord and disobeyed him and, and have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our power to walk in his commandments that he gave us openly since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt into the present day. We have been no dis we have been disobedient unto the Lord our power and we have been negligent into hearing his voice. Wherefore, the evils cleaved unto us, and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt to give us a land that flowed with milk and honey, like as it is, like as it is to see this day. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord, our power, according to all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us. But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart to, to serve strange gods. And to do evil in the sight of the Lord, our power. So the Lord has given us law, such as the commands to follow. And we made a covenant with the Lord, meaning we made an agreement with him that we was going to keep his ways. Right. And what we broke that covenant because we disobeyed the word of the Lord, which he had given unto us. So, as it, the verse 20 says, wherefore the evil is cleared unto us and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses, his servant. Okay, so that's why we're going through everything we're going through, Jake, because our disobedience unto the Lord. Okay, but nevertheless, the Lord is still dealing with the Israelites at the end of the day because he's showing his word unto Jacob. All right, so let's get another. Let's, uh, now from there, let's go to the book of Psalm 78. Verse 5. And it says this. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which commanded our fathers that they should make them known 
to their children that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep his commandments. You see that? And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. So, you know, just pretty much just going to as, as you know, we're supposed to teach our children, and our children are supposed to teach their, their children, you know, the ways of Yahweh Shimon and how to follow him in the right way and, and follow his path. Okay, and not be like our forefathers that have rebelled against the Lord, you know. Uh, the ones that which rebelled against the Lord, I'll say that. Okay. Let's go to the book of Psalms. One oh five. Let's start at verse six. It says, "O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our power; his judgments are all in the earth." He had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham, his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You see that? Same unto thee I will give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in the number, in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to to, an, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, "Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm." Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. But the point I wanted to touch is what? He confirmed the same. I start verse 9 again. It says, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You see, so the Lord is only dealing with his people, the Israelites. Okay. From the, all the way from the, the Old Testament to the New Testament, he is dealing with his people, Israel, and it is proven fact after fact after fact according to the Holy Scriptures. Okay? Because the covenant is only for the Israelites. You matter, matter of fact, let's say in the book of Psalms, let's go to Psalms 50. Okay? Salakia, Salakia. Let's go to the book of Psalms 50. Verse 5, right? Because who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites, okay? The saints are the Israelites, okay? Um, I believe that's uh, Psalms. Ooh, man, I knocked the dust off that one. I know it's in the book of Psalms. 149? I'm not mistaken. Let's try 149. Let's go to the book of Psalms 149, verse... Nope, 148. Uh, yep. It's the book of Psalms 148, verse 13. It says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, Praise ye the Lord. So the saints are Israelites. The saints are the children of Israel. Okay? Don't let anyone tell you different. Because it's all about what the scriptures say. Okay? And read in the right context and with the in with the right understanding. Okay? So this is the book of Psalms 50, verse 5. It says, Gather my saints together unto me. Those that made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And who have made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice? The Israelites, okay? These are who the saints are. You other people, you heathen, you want to proclaim yourself to be the saints. But in all actuality, according to the Bible, you are not the saints. The children of Israel are the saints. All right? 
So uh, I got a little bit more I want to go into. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah 31 and 31 because we, uh, as we briefly read, speaking about the covenants a little bit. Well, who? Let's see who the covenants are for, the old and the new. All right. So let's go to the book of Jeremiah 31, verse 31. It says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Because we as a nation was married unto the Lord. We was a woman married unto the Lord. Okay, he was her husband, so to speak. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts, and I will be their power, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember their sin no more. So when we're in a kingdom, we're not going to have to teach our brothers and sisters uh, the, the law. Why? Because the law is going to be written in our inward parts. You see? So that makes no sense when people say, well, the law is done away with. The law is done away with. Just for us, when we get to the kingdom, the Lord put the law in our inward parts. We won't go off anymore. And we won't have to teach our neighbors uh, uh, where they're going off anymore. That doesn't make any sense. You see? But see, what they don't understand is that the law is not done away with. You see? But the law will not save you. Okay? But what we, as the book of Romans say, roughly paraphrasing, we establish the law. Okay? So don't get it confused. Alright? So it says, verse 35, it says, Thus saith the Lord, which given the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea. When the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, said the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Okay. So do you see these ordinances today? Have you seen the moon this uh have you seen the moon tonight? In the morning. Oh, have you seen the stars when you looked up in the sky at night? Right? In the morning, do you see the sun? You see? Do you see these different ordinances that the Lord have created? Right? The answer is yes. So if the answer is yes, that means the seed of Israel is still on the earth today. So for the people to say the Israelites are done away with, that's complete BS. Okay? That's complete BS. The Lord people still exist the israelites are still on earth today okay we're just not in our rightful rulership and y'all are not giving an honor you know uh, uh that uh, what we should have but at this time in this in this in this present world of wickedness we shouldn't have it at the moment but we were going to get we we're going to get that very soon but we we we'd rather get it right the minute of the lord we'd rather get the honor and glory uh, at its right appropriate time, which will be in the kingdom, which when you when when Yahusha will make his return back to destroy this place of filth, okay, when we can truly serve our power and, and, and truth and, and and righteousness, okay, that's when we want to receive our honor and glory, okay. The hell would receive our honor and glory on this side, but let's continue on. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews 8, verse 8. And it reads, it says, let's start at verse 6. It says, but now he obtained a more excellent ministry, but how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. You see? So the covenant now was, was an upgrade. Okay? For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for repentance. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come and save the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Why? Because we could not keep the old covenant. Okay? 
not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, right? I will put my laws into their mind and I will write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. You see, so we're not going to have to teach uh, the ways of Yahweh Shem El Shah because they're already going to be written in our inward parts, not the heathen. Okay, because the heathen are not a part of the covenant. Okay, I said again, the heathen are not a part of the co covenant whatsoever. And as you see, you don't see them nowhere in here. Okay, you have you don't see them nowhere in here mentioned about in the new covenants. Verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Read in context, whose unrighteousness? The house of Israel and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he said, if a new covenant he had made the first old, now which decay and waxes old is ready to vanish Away. So that's the point, you know, the Lord showed his word into Jacob, right? His statutes and covenants to Israel. So this word, this Holy Bible is only for the Israelites. The covenants are only for the Israelites. Okay, so that's the point of this quick lesson. I just wanted to uh, share with you brothers and sisters out there that, hey, the Lord is only dealing with us. You see? So, hey, Lord willing, hope this lesson was edifying. edifying and until next time, I want to say Shalom.